There are many different ways to build models to calculate football player ratings. How can we evaluate whether one model is better or worse than another model? <music> Greetings! My name is Lars Magnus, and on this YouTube channel I explain and evaluate different models for calculating football player ratings. In this video, we will look at whether it's possible to evaluate the quality of different rating systems. To some extent, it might be possible to subjectively assess the quality of a rating system. For example, if we have a rating system that produces a top 10 list of the best players in the world that looks like this, then we could probably all agree that it is most likely a rather poor rating system. However, if we have two top 10 lists that look like this, are we really qualified to say that one is more accurate than the other? In this case, we probably should try to find different ways to evaluate the quality of the ratings. In this video, we will take a look at two different measures of the quality of rating systems that attempt to capture two different criteria that good player rating systems should attempt to fulfill. We can illustrate the purpose of these two criteria using a target such as this one. The bullseye can in this case be interpreted as a set of perfect ratings being able to correctly rate all football players according to their actual quality. Less than perfect rating systems will tend to overvalue some players and undervalue some others, thereby leading to a slightly inaccurate ranking. These can be represented by points on the target with the distance from the bull's eye representing how much worse they are than the perfect rating. To evaluate rating systems, we therefore would like some method to measure which of two different sets of ratings are more accurate. Our rating systems are based on using a large set of data, consisting of absurd football matches. If we use the same rating system, but use different data, the ratings produced will be different. They will therefore correspond to different points on our target. In general, a good rating system will tend to produce ratings that are similar, independent of which matches are actually included in the dataset. To evaluate rating systems, we therefore would like some method to measure which of two rating systems produce ratings that are more precise. Before we let go of the target analogy, let us consider four different behaviors that a rating system may exhibit. If a rating system both produces consistent ratings, and these are close to representing the true strength of players, we can say that the rating system is both valid and reliable. If the rating system produces consistent ratings, but they are biased and do not represent the true strength for all players, we say that the rating system is reliable, but not valid. If the rating system produces inconsistent ratings, but they are unbiased and they combine to be on average about correct, we say that the rating system is valid but not reliable. Finally, if the rating system produces inconsistent ratings that are systematically biased in some way, we say that the rating system is neither valid nor reliable. Of course, in practice, any rating system will have some deficiencies, and it's not going to be either reliable or unreliable, but rather somewhere in between. So let's see how we are going to measure how valid and how reliable our rating systems are. First, consider reliability. That is, we want to produce similar player ratings even when using different sets of historical matches as the basis for our calculations. Since we only have a limited number of historical matches in the first place, we will do this by taking our full set of historical matches and split it randomly into two subsets of approximately equal size. We then produce ratings based on each of these subsets independently. This gives two rating lists, which will differ slightly from each other. There are then different ways to measure how similar or how different these lists are. We choose to use Pearson's correlation coefficient to measure the similarity of the two rating lists. This gives us a value of 1 if the rating lists are identical, even if shifted or scaled, and a value of 0 if the rating lists seem totally unrelated. Next, consider validity. That is, we want to know how well a set of ratings fit with the actual strength of the players. To do this, we need to make some assumptions. Mainly, we will claim that there is a connection between the players' ratings and how well their team performs. In particular, we will assume that if we take the average rating of the home team players and the average rating of the away team players, then the difference in those averages should say something about the likelihood of the different outcomes of a match. Furthermore, we will assume that if better ratings are used, then those ratings should contain more information that is relevant to predict the outcome of a match. 
Without getting too technical, here is the procedure used to evaluate how valid our ratings are. Starting with a set of past matches, we can use those to produce player ratings. For a given match, we can then calculate the difference between average ratings for the two teams, and we can record the actual outcome of the match. So basically, whether it was a home win, a draw, or an away win. We will then build a model that can use those observations of rating differences and match outcomes to predict outcomes of future matches given the knowledge about the difference in average ratings between the teams playing. Those predictions will be used for future matches and compared with the actual outcomes of those future matches. We will then measure the quality of the predictions made. The main idea is that when we have access to better ratings, we should be able to better predict the outcomes of matches. Now, let's put all of this together and use it to evaluate the rating systems that we have proposed so far on this channel. There are two different measures of quality for our ratings, so draw two axes. On the first axis, record the prediction loss, that is, how good are the ratings when used to predict outcomes of football matches. On the second axis, record the repeatability, which we decided to measure using the correlation between ratings as calculated for two different halves of the complete set of matches. The repeatability measure should be between 0 and 1, with higher values being better. The prediction measure will tend to be in the indicated range, with lower values being better. To make rating systems easier to compare, we have flipped the first axis around with smaller values, and therefore better values, to the right. This means that better rating systems should provide values further away from the origin and towards the green region of the figure. Let us consider some benchmarks, so that we can tell how good or how bad our current rating systems are. The first benchmark is if we just assign ratings completely at random. This is about as bad as we can get. It gives a repeatability value of 0, as there is no correlation between random ratings. We get a prediction loss close to 0.65. Although random ratings do not carry any valuable information, our prediction model can still make use of historical data to know that, for example, a home win is more likely than an away win. Another benchmark is to assign to each player a unique rating that does not carry any information about the quality of the player. We can then obtain a perfect repeatability value of 1, but the prediction loss will not change. As a third benchmark, only valid for the prediction loss. We can calculate the prediction loss that would be obtained by using the best odds from the betting market. These are likely quite efficient and should be quite a bit better at predicting the actual outcome than our so far very naive player ratings. The very first rating that we considered in our videos was the total plus minus rating, which basically is the sum of the goals scored minus the sum of the goals conceded from the perspective of a given player. It turns out that this gives us a repeatability measure of around 0.8 and a prediction loss of around 0.6. The second rating we considered was what we called pure plus minus, which is basically the total plus minus score divided by the playing time. Interestingly, it gives more or less the same prediction loss, but a much weaker value for the repeatability measure. The third rating that we looked at was the adjusted plus-minus rating, where we used linear regression to find ratings that fit best with the observed goal differences in each segment of a match. As we observed from the top 10 list associated to this rating, the results were rather erratic, and our measurements confirm this. We are doing almost as bad as if we were just drawing random ratings. Luckily, our fourth rating, the regularized adjusted plus-minus rating, seemed to be able to fix some of the deficiencies of the adjusted plus-minus rating. However, this requires us to find a suitable value for the regularization parameter, which, if set to zero, makes regularized plus-minus equal to the adjusted plus-minus rating. However, when we start to increase the regularization parameter, we can observe that the predictive ability of our ratings increase and also the repeatability measure is improving gradually. We then reach a point where increasing the regularization parameter further makes the predictive ability worse, while the repeatability measure is still improving. If we keep going, an extremely high regularization parameter will ensure that all players are assigned a rating ever closer to zero. We therefore halt at this point and declare that we should use the regularization parameter that provides us with the best predictions. At this point, we have two rating systems that are worth keeping. The total plus-minus is best with respect to repeatability, disregarding the unique benchmark, and the regularized plus-minus rating is best with respect to prediction loss. The other two rating systems, pure plus-minus and adjusted plus-minus, are dominated. 
there are other rating systems that are better with respect to both available measures. That's it. We now have a framework for evaluating different player rating systems. We will of course use this in future videos when we present different variations of rating systems and when we try to improve on the regularized adjusted plus minus rating that we have developed so far. So stay tuned for more videos on football player ratings. Until then, take care and goodbye.